Kids, it's Demi, and today we are going to be ranking the attractions here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. There are 11 attractions here at Hollywood Studios. We are not going to be counting the shows today, just the attractions. And this is not my personal favorite list. This is what I think are the best attractions because if this was my favorite list, this list would be very different. So let's get in there. Let's see the rides. Let's rank them all and let's go get into some hijinks. Something has to be in last place. And here, number 11, Alien Swirling Saucers is in last place. Alien Swirling Saucers is themed in Toy Story Land to the aliens from Pizza Planet. And it's basically just the whip, you know, that carnival ride, the whip. And the reason why it's in last place is just because it's a ride that's like in most carnivals. It's like a, a ride that's nothing. This is literally the most filler attractions of filler attractions. Though it is fun I and, and the aliens are cute and kids do love this. I still think that since it's really nothing particularly special, um, it's definitely the last on the list. Um, you will still have a fun time on it. Uh, I would never wait more than 15 minutes for it, but it's really just a fun little carnival attraction that you can find at most state fairs and carnivals and you know you don't have to come all the way to Disney for and that is why it is number 11 on my list. Number 10, Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. Now before I even say anything, the technology on this attraction is unreal. It's a show but there is a full-size Lightning McQueen car animatronic. It's unbelievably so cool. It looks amazing. The problem with this attraction is if you know nothing about cars, you have really no idea what's going on with the plot. And I saw the first cars, and it has nothing to do really with the first cars. You have to see the sequels apparently, which I recently learned. So I personally don't like this attraction, but I think that the lightning between animatronic is amazing. I think if you have like extra time, um, it's so cool to see in person. Kids that love cars will absolutely love this, of course, but that is why it is number 10. Number nine, Star Tours, the adventures continue. So Star Tours is an attraction where you go and you sit down in a seat and you have 3D glasses and you are being moved around and you're feeling like you're moving. And this is definitely an attraction for people who have motion sickness should avoid. I am one of these people, this is on a personal note, not one of my favorite attractions at all. Um, but the reason why it's number nine is just because the technology is kind of basic. It's nothing really exciting. People even without motion sickness don't usually have a great time getting off of it either. It's, it does really make you a little bit nauseous getting off. There's a lot of rewritability to this ride because there are 21 sequences that could happen so you may never get the same one again. Plus the best part of course is seeing who the rebel spy is on your ride and hoping that you get to be the rebel spy. However, if you're not a Star Wars fan, you may find it hard to follow the plot. I know when I go with one of my friends who doesn't watch Star Wars, she really does not enjoy this ride at all. She can't really follow what's going on and then of course the ride system itself isn't that exciting. So if you're not a Star Wars fan, this may not be for you. However, this ride usually does have a shorter wait time, so that is definitely a plus, so that's why it is number nine on this list. Number eight, Muppet Vision 3D. This show is absolutely adorable, featuring the best thing in the world, the Muppets. This show is about the Muppets discovering this new technology called Muppet Vision 3D and them trying to create a show in Muppet Vision 3D and things just keep going wrong and hilarity ensues. On top of that, you actually get to see real live Muppets. You get to see animatronic Statler and Waldorf, you know, the two old men who sit in the balcony. They are there heckling the show. You get to see an animatronic Swedish chef, and you get to see real life Sweetums, who, like, he is actually there. He coming out, the first time I saw Sweetums, I literally cried. To see a real life Muppet who's coming out every show that's happening every 10, 15 minutes, I think is an amazing thing that Disney does. It's a real treat. This is I, this is so underrated in my opinion. Also, the show always has like a really low wait. Usually you're just waiting for the next show to continue. It's really fun, really funny, and I think if you're if you're a big Muppets fan, you're going to love this obviously. Even if you're not, it's super funny. It's in the air conditioning. It's usually not a long wait, and I think it's just such a classic and if they ever take this away, I will riot in the streets and it just proves that there should be more Muppets 
in Disney World. So and that's why I wish honestly if this was my personal ranking this would probably be like my number 2, but it's not. This is this is I'm trying to be subjective here, but that's why it is number 8 on this list. Number Slinky Dog Dash. <laughs> One of the most popular attractions in all of Walt Disney World, not just even Hollywood Studios. This coaster is so fun. It's themed to Toy Story, obviously. It has launches in it. It is faster than you think. I love this attraction. It is such a fun coaster. However, the queue is always so long because it is so popular. Lightning lanes get, you know, um, Genie Plus lightning lanes get taken up so, so quickly for this ride because it is so popular. You know, this is like, every 10 year old's favorite coaster and adults love it too because people don't realize just how little fast it goes it is a really great coaster and it's themed really well um but unfortunately it always just has a really long line uh that's really my biggest problem with it and really uh it, the reason why it's number six is because the rest of the uh, attractions on this list are just a little bit technologically better, um, but it's really a wonderful attraction. And if you don't have to wait, it's even better. And that's why it is number six. Number five, Toy Story Mania. This ride is a ride and a game combined, and it has a zero height requirement. So the entire family can enjoy this. It's super fun. It's a pull string and you do different types of carnival games like throwing plates and doing ring toss and with your, with your favorite Toy Story characters. Um, it You can like do competitively. It's different each time for you because you know you can go back and try a different, different way again and I think it's like the best version of a ride game in Disney World. It's better than like Buzz Lightyear in my opinion and it's super fun when this first opened the lines were out the door and it's you know something that people can do over and over again. I find that the queue is just like the best thing ever. It's just so wonderfully themed. It's just you see all the different types of games like all over the place. It's just a spectacularly themed ride and that is why it is number five. Number five, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. This ride makes your Star Wars dreams come true because you get to board the iconic Millennium Falcon. The best part for me is actually being in the Falcon before you get into the actual like cockpit area. You get to see like the little chessboard and stuff. Um, this ride is really fun if you're the pilot because <laughs> you get to pilot the Falcon. There's two pilots, two gunners, and two engineers. And yeah, when you're piloting the Falcon, it's great. They have a screen in front of you, so it's kind of like Star Wars, but a little enhanced. So it's like a Star Wars game type thing. But when you're the gunner and you're the engineer, like the gunner is just hitting a button over and over and over again, just like constantly hitting it. And engineer just hits the button every couple of times. It's kind of boring. The first time I ever did it, I was an engineer and I was not impressed with this ride. And then the second time I did it, I was the pilot and I was like, oh my God, wait, this ride is amazing. And then I finally had to do a gunner and I was like, this is exhausting. So it really depends on your position. Uh, I think the technology is like, it's nothing like too exciting. It's been done before, but it's just like a little bit different. It's still like a simulator, so it's nothing too exciting. But um, it is super fun if you are the pilot. However, if you're not, it's to me not the greatest experience at all. Also, if you are not put in, uh, if you are put in a party that is not your own, because if you are less than six people, you're gonna be put in with a different party and that might not be as fun because people are loud and, or like people you know, may not vibe with the party you're with. I've, I've, that's happened to me multiple times. But if you are with a group of six, maybe it will be way more fun for you. So it all really depends on the environment, what position you're in. So there's like a lot of factors that play into this ride and that's why it's my number five pick. Number four, Rock and Roller Coaster featuring Aerosmith. This launch coaster goes 57 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. It features the music of Aerosmith. There are four songs. You don't know which one you're gonna get. You know their song, Love in an Elevator. They actually changed it to Love in a Roller Coaster. So that's cool. I think that's extra points. Um, the only problem I have with this ride is that it, sometimes it's a little shaky, um, but otherwise it's super fun. It's a little loud sometimes, sometimes it's not. It's like depending on the car you get. I don't know, I always have that experience. There is a single rider line, which I really enjoy because sometimes it makes it go a little bit faster. Um, sometimes it doesn't either, I don't know. It always depends for some reason. The pre-show was fun, you get to see Aerosmith and their whole point of this ride is that you're watching them record and then they're like, have to go to a concert and then 
they were going to leave you behind, but then they realized, hey, how about some backstage passes? And then they're going to take you in a super stretch limo to their concert. It's fun. It has a fun little theme to it. And it's a super fun coaster. It's the fastest coaster in Disney World. And that is why it is number four. Number three, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Can you believe that this was the first attraction to ever feature Mickey Mouse? Mickey's Magic does not count. This is a moving vehicle attraction. This is a trackless ride. It's so cool. You have no idea where you're going. When you sit in a ride vehicle on this ride, you have, like, it changes every time. I have sat in almost every seat on this attraction and I've had a different experience each time. You are going through a Mickey cartoon. You go through different scenes. It's really an amazing attraction technologically. And you have the wonderful song at the end, Nothing Can Stop Us Now. It's so adorable, so beautiful. Um, personally, it's not one of my favorite attractions, but I really do appreciate the technology behind it. And I think that it's really cool how it's a different experience each time. And I can't, I still can't believe that this, it took this long for Mickey to get his own attraction. Um, a lot of people were sour when this came and replaced the great movie ride. So a lot of people, you know, are anti runway railway. So let me know in the comments what your opinion on runway railway is. And if you think it should have replaced the great movie ride, or if you missed the great movie ride, but you cannot deny the technology on this is amazing and what they did with the storytelling is amazing and that is why it is my number three pick. Number two, Tower of Terror. Personally, my favorite attraction, my spooky heart loves it. The theming on this ride is just unbelievably spectacular. It really sets the mood as soon as you walk in. That lobby is unreal. The music is really unbelievable. I think the choices were perfect. That pre-show at Rod Sterling really puts you into the twilight zone. The cast members do an amazing job to make you feel like you are checking in and really put a little fear. When you sit down in that elevator, the anticipation is just unreal. The projections to this day look absolutely amazing. The Disney World version, this version in particular, is the version that the car actually moves forward. That's how, like, that's the one in Disneyland. I know it's Guardians of the Galaxy now, but their track does not move forward, it only goes up and down. This one moves forward. You can see, like, all like, the E as MC Square thing, the twinkly lights. And then the best part about this attraction is that it's different each time with the drops and the ups and downs. You never know what you're gonna get. You, you could have ride this a million times, but you're never gonna know which version you're gonna get, even if you remember the, the patterns, because it's different each time. It's exciting, it's you know thrilling, it's themed so well. I will cry if they ever try to change this theming. I will really cry and riot. I hope that never happens because it's perfect to me and that is why it is number two. Number one, Rise of the Resistance. This ride is truly amazing. It is more than a ride. It is an, a 20 minute immersive experience featuring holograms, droids, uh, uh, stormtroopers, and amazing animatronics, and trackless ride system. I mean, the first time I rode on it, I, I mean, I, I cry a lot actually when I ride on this ride. It really makes you feel like you are in the story. Um, the first time that those transport doors opened and you saw the, and I saw the stormtroopers, my jaw dropped. My husband said to me, because he was with me, he said, this makes this ride makes me so angry <laughs> because he has so many problems with the Star Wars franchise, uh, and this ride is so amazing that it made him so angry. Uh, it truly is an incredible experience. It might be the greatest ride ever created. Um, the, doesn't mean it's my favorite ride. It's one of my favorite rides. I love the trackless ride system. However, this ride does break down every single day. It's ridiculous. And now that it is on a standby wait, the lines are absolutely ridiculously long. But this ride really is truly unbelievably incredible. I mean, they really immerse you in the story of being captured by the First Order. And if you really let yourself go and believe you're there and captured and trying to be rescued by um, the rebels, you're gonna have such an incredible experience. I don't even think you have to be a Star Wars fan to appreciate this. It is truly an incredible, incredible experience.
Well, my dudes, that was my ranking of the attractions here at Hollywood Studios. Let me know if you agree, disagree, or what you would rearrange on this list. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit your bell notification so you don't miss anything that goes on this channel. Follow me on Instagram at Magical Hijinks. Check out my Patreon, become a patron for extra exclusive bonus content, and you'll be helping me to continue to create great content here on this channel. And until next time, my dudes, I hope you guys get into some hijinks very, very soon. Bye-bye.